Hello everyone, I am Sajida, faculty of Silver Hills Public School. I am here to discuss the chapter Changes Around Us in Science NCRT syllabus. We experience so many changes around us, isn't it? The weather changes, the climate changes and your body also changes a lot, your hair grows. So now you will learn something more about these changes which happen around us. Okay. Now let us discuss some of that type of changes, right? Let me show you a few examples. See, ice changed into water. How can ice change into water? When I took ice out of the freezer from the refrigerator, it will automatically change into water because the temperature increased, isn't it? Now when I am keeping it back in the freezer, the water will again change into ice. This is a change in which you are getting back the ice again when you change the condition. Now let us move to the next example. Here stretching of the rubber band. When you apply force and elongate the rubber band, the rubber band will elongate and increase in size. When you leave it, it regains its original shape, right? Now here melting of the butter, the butter melts when you are taking it out of the freezer that means you are changing the condition here also and it will again if you are taking it back to the fridge what happens it changes back to butter again. Now so what is common in all these examples it is seen that these all these changes are the changes in which you will get back the original substance when you change the conditions. Such changes in which you will get back the original substance by changing the condition, we call it a reversible change. I can give you some sweet example also. Just imagine you bought an ice cream from a shop which is little quite far away from your house. You have to travel half an hour. By the time you reach home, what happens? The ice cream will start to melt. Will you eat like that? No, definitely we will keep it in the freezer and we want to get back in the ice cream in the original as it is an original ice cream itself. So what will you do now? After keeping in the freezer, you will eat it after some time. Here also you are getting back the ice cream, same in the case of chocolate. These changes are very familiar to you, I know. In all these examples, the same thing is happening. That means you are getting the original substance by changing the conditions. So, such changes in which you will get back the original substance by changing the condition, we call it a reversible change. Now, let us move to the next example. See the seedling from the germinating stage, it, is, it has reached the harvesting stage. From the germination, slowly grows and now it's in, it is in the stage of harvesting. See, can you bring back any of these changes? Can you make the plant back into a seed here? No, it is not possible. Now here, a small baby girl has grown up to a go adult lady, right? Can you bring back any of these stages? When after becoming an adult, can you become a baby boy or a girl like this? No, it is also not possible. See here, the flower bud, it is changing into a flower. Can you change the same flower back to bud? Not at all. See, ripening of the fruits, another example. So, here, what is happening in all these examples? In all these examples which I showed you right now, it is entirely different from the first few examples which I showed you like the melting of the butter or the stretching of the rubber band. It is quite different, isn't it? In this change, you, are, you will never get back the original substance even if you change the condition also. So, such changes in which you will never get back the original substance, we call it a irreversible change. So, reversible changes are the changes you will get back the original substance by changing the condition. Irreversible change is a change in which you will not get back the original substance. The substance entirely changes into a new one. That is what is happening. Now, see, let us see the differences between the reversible and irreversible change. Now, we will get back the original substance in the case of reversible change. Then what happens in irreversible change? You will never get back the original substance. 
here the changes are temporary that is for a short while melting of the ice cream or melting of the chocolate or the butter the elongation of the rubber band all this is happening for a short while when you just change the condition you are getting back the original substance milk changing into curd that is also another example of this irreversible change you will never get back the milk again such changes are not temporary they are all permanent and here properties of the material will not change that means even though they melt or some change happens you are getting back the original substance the property of the material will completely change you are getting an entirely new substance so these are the changes of reversible and irreversible change now let us move on to the next top our portion of the lesson which is physical and chemical changes here children the tearing of the paper this is an example or another one is breaking of the glass when you tear a paper will you get a new paper no the size of the paper is decreasing or it changed a lot or when you what is happening when you cut the paper into two pieces also the size becomes different isn't it sometimes you change the shape by cutting and doing something on when the glass breaks also or the mirror breaks also what is happening anything if you are cutting you are not getting an origin new substance you are getting only the same substance with something different something different in the physical property isn't it that means the outside appearance the shape or the size or something like that changes but you will not you will always get the original substance when the glass breaks or another example also when the mirror breaks and all what is happening if the mirror is breaking and it changes into two it becomes two pieces but still you are getting the mirror piece only in the same way glass also in the case of paper also the same thing is happening only the physical appearance changes but you are no new substance has formed here so such changes in which no new substances are formed only the physical properties of the substance will change such changes we call them physical changes so any change in which only the physical property of the substance changes we call it a physical change let us move to the next example cooking of the food right what is here see in the previous example as i told you when you cut the vegetables the vegetable remains the same but it became two pieces that's all if you are cutting it into two pieces but when you cook a vegetable what is going to happen it becomes a new substance which is entirely different in taste isn't it so cooking of the food and in the case of burning of the wood what when you burn the wood or when you when it catches fire it changes into ash it emits light and the smoke comes out of that so it changes into a new substance here also after cooking the food it's entirely different from the one from the previous one curdling of the milk also when you add curd to milk what is happening it is irreversible change of course but it is also a chemical change why because when the when you add curd curd to milk the bacteria present in the curd changes the whole milk into curd so such changes in which you are getting a new substance which is entirely different from the previous one by due to some chemical reactions happening inside we call such changes as chemical changes so chemical changes are the changes in which new substances are formed both physical and chemical properties of the original substance changes so what is the difference between physical and chemical change see the heading itself give you the difference physical change means the physical property of the substance changes chemical change means you will get a new substance in physical change no new substances are formed but in chemical changes an entirely new substance is forming so so now you have learned about reversible and irreversible changes and physical and chemical changes now let me tell you one thing from this section you will you after learning this much you should be able to identify the changes that means if you are given some changes and asked to identify whether it is reversible or irreversible then you have to identify it if you know the concept of physical and chemical change and reversible and irreversible change very well then it is easy for you to identify the changes and categorize it as reversible irreversible physical or chemical changes another 
good example is burning of the candle in burning of the candle two changes are happening simultaneously you know what it is see melting of the wax is happening when the wax smells what happens it melts and changes its shape nothing is happening you will not get any uh, new substance in that case but when the wick burns what happens it produces ash and the sm smoke is coming and the light is produced so new substances form so in burning of the candle both the physical and chemical changes are taking place now i think it is clear to you what is physical what is a physical change and what is a chemical change and the difference between the two changes now let us move to the next part of the lesson that is expansion and contraction in expansion when the molecules gain energy they start vibrating and they become loosely arranged when they become loosely arranged they need more space that is known as expansion and just opposite of that what happens when you are cooling something the particles of the substance will come close to each other and they need less space and that is known as contraction so if you know the meaning of the word expand and contract itself you can explain it in terms of the molecular arrangement isn't it the particles start vibrating and they need more space means they means they become loosely arranged that is known as expansion and here in contraction during cooling the particles of the substance come closer to each other and need less space that is known as contraction now let us see few examples in which we apply the knowledge of expansion and contraction on substances have you seen a cart sometimes it is not possible because now carts are not so familiar on the road isn't it but olden days people used to travel in the carts itself you know every cart wheel has a metal rim outside so how is it possible to insert the metal rim to the cart wheel you know that is when the, the people those who work with this those who make this rims of the cart wheel they will heat the they will make the rim little smaller in diameter than the wheel that means diameter and radius you might have learned in max isn't it the diameter of the rim will be smaller than the wheel then they will heat the rim and what happens since it is a solid and it is a metal it expands now they will slowly insert it over the they will fit it onto the wheel then after some time the rim when it cools down it contracts and it becomes tightly fixed to the wheel so that is see here we are you making use of this expansion and contraction in inserting the metal rim to the cart wheel now see here what is happening the same procedure we are following here also the metal part of the tools to be fixed to the wooden handles isn't it here also the people they will heat this metal part and the rim will be enlarged like this then they will fit it onto the wooden handle and they will contract and this it can be fixed onto the wooden handles here also we are making use of this expansion and contraction in metals here see can you see gaps in the railway tracks why there are gaps in the railway tracks it is left for the track to expand during the summer season when the, during the summer season when it, the tracks gets heated up they need more space isn't it? so at that time there should be gap for them to fill otherwise the track will bend so and it may result in accidents to avoid that only gaps are left in the railway tracks here also we are applying the knowledge of expansion and contraction here during winter again when the metal contracts the gap will be there summer when it expands they will fill the gap so no difference in the shape of the track track will be straight itself otherwise if it is not expanding and no gap is left it will bend that means when the track needs more space naturally it will bend and find space for that then the track will bend and it may result in the train, train accidents to avoid that only gaps are left in the railway tracks here see what is this the metal lid of a bottle why this is kept here i am showing this example you know more than you your parent mother will be familiar to this that means when she struggles to open the metal lid of the bottles what can she do she can dip the metal cap of the bottle in the hot water why because then the metal cap will uh, expand and it is easy for us to open the bottle next time when you see your mother do struggling with opening of this metal bottles you can definitely help 
help her and give her this theory behind that. That means it is the expansion of the substances which we are making use in this trick. That means by dipping the bottle in the hot water and make it easier to open the bottle. That is it. Now let me show you another example. The milk is boiling and it is coming out of the vessel if the burner is not turned off, isn't it? Now when you turn off the burner, that change is happening. It is again going back to its previous level. Here also the same thing is happening. The liquid, when it is gaining energy, the molecules, they move apart and they need more space. And so they expand and hence it is coming off. But when you stop giving the produce, that heat, when you stop the burner, it regains, it goes back to its original level. Here also the boiling of the milk, we are applying the knowledge of expansion and contraction. Now see, let me tell you some interesting facts related to these changes. On heating, mercury expands, isn't it? It is the expansion and contraction of the mercury which we make use in thermometers. In thermometer, when the temperature of the body increases, the mercury expands and increases in level and shows the temperature. And when it is, the temperature is going down, it goes down and contracts. That is what we make use in thermometers. And we should avoid, this is another value which you have to keep in your mind, children. The avoid burning of the wood. Burning of the wood definitely is an irreversible change or a chemical change, isn't it? But it pollutes the environment. Make changes so that it is beneficial for the mankind and make the earth a better place to live. Then, rusting of iron is another slow process and it is also an irreversible change. You can only prevent the rusting of the iron by painting or anything like that, but rusting of iron is also an irreversible change. Let us discuss few questions. How are the following changes different from each other? Changing of the milk into curd and hot milk becoming cold milk. Changing of the milk into curd. Milk is changing into curd which is an entirely new substance, isn't it? A new curd, when you, how your mother is preparing curd I explained before. That means when she adds curd to the milk and the whole milk changes into curd. You are getting a new substance and it is a chemical change or an irreversible change. But hot milk is becoming cold milk, what happens? Milk is, remains as milk only, nothing new, no new substance has formed, so that is a reversible change. So that is the difference between these two changes, changing of milk into curd and hot milk becoming cold milk. Now, when you light a candle, the wick burns and the wax melts. Are these two changes similar? No. Melting of the wax is a physical change, I explained. So, and lighting the wick of the candle, when it burns, it produces light and the ash is produced and smoke comes out. So, that is a chemical change. So, here two changes are taking place which is different. How can you help your mother when she is struggling with steel vessels that get stuck with one another? When the vessel gets stuck with one another, how can you help her actually? Here you can apply your knowledge of expansion and contraction. Ask her to dip the vessels in cold water, in, sorry, in hot water so that the vessels will expand and it is easy for her to remove, make, separate it. Now, you already learned about reversible and irreversible changes, physical and chemical changes and expansion and contraction. Changes which can be reversed are known as reversible changes and which you cannot reverse or you will not get back the original substance by changing the condition, we call it an irreversible change. Then physical and chemical change, any change which, cha any change which brings about the change in the physical appearance of a substance, we call it a physical change and no new substances are formed. And But in the case of chemical change, new substances forming, so that is the difference between physical and chemical changes and expansion and contraction. In expansion, on heating, the molecules move apart and become loosely arranged and they need more space, so they expand. In contraction, on cooling, the molecules come closer together and they become tightly packed and that is why we say it is contraction. And you can apply this knowledge of expansion and contraction in various life situations also. So that is all in this lesson of changes around us. So we reach the end of the session. I hope the whole content is clear to you children. So always remember learning is a treasure that follows its honor everywhere. So keep learning. Thank you.